Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online virtual interview series. Of course, we want to talk today with Michael Connott, the CEO of Visla Silver. And yeah, first of all, good morning to Canada. Michael, how are you doing? Very good, Jochen. I, you know, it's been a very exciting uh, couple of weeks for Visla Silver, and um, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I can really imagine that as I'm a shareholder of the company, I should disclose that also in the beginning here and a happy shareholder, I should, yeah. should say too. <laughs> and uh, man, congratulations, you just announced a $60 million bottle. How was that coming together? I mean, no wonder with your drill results, I fully understand it. But $60 million, that's quite a lot of money. And I think it should be easily enough to build your mind, right? Well, you know, I think... Um... You know, there's, a, there, the, you know, the reason that people buy stock and the reason that, uh, you know, that these institutions have, have come into the stock uh, recently through this plot deal is that they, they think the share price is going to go higher. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the reason that we all think the share price is going to go higher is because we've done such an excellent job and the team in Mexico has done such an excellent job of finding uh, existing mineralization at Napoleon and Tejitos. And then showing the potential for uh, a very, very large district, one that's never been explored uh, in any meaningful way, um, with a pathway to production that, that's um, so different than any other company. So, you know, I think, um, you know, we all think the company is, is, is um, still undervalued for, for what we can see in the future. So, um, you know, I suspect that um, you know, we have, we'll have a lot of excellent news to come over the coming weeks here. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. And uh, as I said, uh, the 60 million is really fine to build that project, right? The 60 million will give us the ability. Uh, now our cash level will be about, um, well, it'll be in excess of about $80 million Canadian. That gives us a lot of flexibility with um, adding more drill rigs, flying EM survey across the property, which is going to allow us uh, basically to find the highest grade areas in, in veins and hidden veins and, and areas that we haven't discovered yet. Um, so that's huge, uh, but it also gives us the ability to um, exercise an option uh, on the property, uh, own the mill, and uh, go into production very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Super, perfect. Um, you just named it already to fly EM geophysics, and uh, you just brought the news out on 25th May, uh, where you generated through the EM geophysics a new targets near Napoleon at Panuco, of course. And this is, of course, let's uh, call it the area of high interest. So... Um, what do you think uh, would mean that for the near-term future in generating those new targets, as you just named it with the high grade? And what do you think in general? Could you, let's say, speed up the exploration? Could you define much, much better the exploration targets and save through that probably also money? Well, yes, exactly. So we, we already have uh, a spectacular success rate when it comes to drilling. You know, we, we made... The discovery of Napoleon on the second hole drilling there, we, we really haven't wasted any drill holes across the district. It's been uh, really remarkable. And you only ever see that in, in top tier projects. Um, you know, so you wouldn't see that on a, on a project that isn't, you know, on the top, top of its class. Um, so already we had an excellent success rate. You know, the, the ability that we're going to have now is to go and drill the highest grade areas of, of these veins with this EM is, is spectacular. And, um, you know, a good example of that is are the, the, the several targets that we found around Napoleon. Now, Charles, our, our technical director and, and, our, and our team down in Mexico, they have a great sense of humor and uh, they've named uh, the, the new vein that seems to be parallel and, and it could be another Napoleon. Um, you know, the parallel vein is called Josephine, which is, of course, Napoleon's wife. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we're excited about that potential there. It could, could very well be another Napoleon just to the, um, just to the west of, of the existing uh, vein there. Now, Napoleon itself is, is really quite impressive still. You know, we have, um, you know, 800 kilometers of strike that we've drilled so far. It's over three kilometers of strike. Uh, you know, Napoleon will continue to grow. Tejitos will continue, continue to grow. And the EM is giving us the ability now to find other targets and we have a, you know, we have a significant exploration matrix that we go through and, and uh, rank and prioritize and uh, filter through all these projects based on which ones we think will have the most amount of volume of metal. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, we've added some, some new top tier uh, priority targets 
to that that matrix. But you know, I suspect that Visa will be here in this district for for many years to come, finding uh, you know hundreds of millions of ounces of silver um, in the, in this district. So uh, we're 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 very excited about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. And I mean, also with Napoleon, you just had a release on 12th of May um, that you have by 800 meters uh, extended the mineralization and uh, also you extended it uh, to depth, which is, I think, also very important because everything was quite shallow so far. And if you now can prove that it also goes down into the depths, I mean, that is outstanding and gives you a, a lot more, let's call it future potential mine life, if you want it yeah. like that. And I mean, uh, you had also something like three and a half meters with 3,700 grams silver equivalent. And if I look at that, because some, some by, sometimes people do not like equivalent calculations, but still that was like 1,274 grams uh, silver per ton, 26 grams gold and uh, three quarters of a percent of lead and 3% uh, zinc, yeah? So, I mean, this is really, even if I take the precious metal content, this is outstanding without regarding it's, let's say, lead and zinc, which is a, a nice byproduct to have, by the way. Well, exactly. And, and what's interesting about the Panuco project and the, um, you know, the district as a whole is that, you know, oftentimes in Mexico, you'll have base metal mines that have silver credits and gold mm. credits, and they'll call them silver mines. But, you know, this is a real silver gold deposit mine mineralization. Um, that has some base metal credits, but it's it's really predominantly uh, precious metals. So I think you know, looking at a back of envelope, it would look to be to me to be about eighty percent economics uh, would be about precious metals, um, and in that probably majority silver. So it really is a um, you know a precious metals camp here. Um, and what's really impressive about that that drill hole is that um, you know it is open at depth. So so. Napoleon, Tejitos, all of our current drilling is open at depth. And as a matter of fact, on Napoleon, we're starting to see some of the higher grades of precious metals, even gold, um, you know, over 300 meters from surface, 350 meters from surface. Now that, that in itself is, is quite impressive because, um, you know, typically you see that, that zonation uh, of precious metals into base metals over that depth, you know, in, in most epithermal systems in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is different, uh, and yep. we're seeing precious metals at, at depth, which, you know, in other occasions where you see this in Mexico, uh, the potential for it to, to extend, you know, even as much as a kilometer from surface is, is, is possible. I'm not saying that's the case here, but we don't know yet. Um, you know, we, we've ended every, <laughs> every whole, you know, at depth is, is, you know, is in mineralization. So we have the potential to, uh, to, to you know, this could be very, very big. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. And also, if I recall it, you just said it already, 350 meters you are going down. But it looks to me a little bit like if you can start, I'm not sure if open pit is possible, but I would say even if the underground uh, mining would be would, would start as, as the mine, as a preferred setup for the mine, I mean, this is really easy to manage, right? Because we talk about depths between 50 and 100 meters. So it's an easy ramp down and uh, you can really start, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and I suspect that, um, you know, like Silvercrest, you, you know, we'd be looking at a scenario where there's, but this is obviously very early to, to discuss mine development, but, um, you know, we are initiating some of these engineering studies already to look at this, but, you know, I suspect that, you know, we may have the case of some development or that we could stockpile as we, as we, um, you know, put a, put a decline in, but, uh, you know, the, the idea is that it actually starts basically at surface, um, uh, you know, so we, we would look at, it doesn't make sense to open pit or under underground. Now, most mines in Mexico that are similar to this are underground mines. And, mm -hmm. and I suspect that that's probably the preferable path for it. Okay, super. Before we come to Tajitos, um, let's stay a second with a possible mine. As you said, you have then approximately $80 million. And I think there's also an over allotment in the financing, which might be used. I could imagine that you faced a lot of interest for this, yeah, because you would be the potential next silver producer in Mexico, let's say, aside of Max Silver. This is a much larger entity by now. But um, what would be, let's say, your 
goals or your your game plan you really want to achieve now with this money and when could you possibly for the regulators that's a forward-looking statement i know um uh, what do you think you could possibly be then in production and what could we expect from your thoughts because you must have a real game plan in your mind otherwise nobody would give you that amount of money well i you know i suppose <laughs> it is a, it's a bit of a, a sensitive uh uh, topic when it comes to, to you know to regulators and and um, you know we we can't make any forward-looking statements that aren't aren't backed up by by uh, reports and and you know certainly we're moving towards that of course we, we need to have a resource and a, an economics report and you know we'll, we'll be doing that um, you know but I can say that our you know our our goal and our our perhaps my goal uh, for the organization uh, is, a, is another way to put it is that we you know we'd like to become a 12 million ounce uh, per annum silver producer um that's silver so equivalent that, or pure silver? silver silver equivalent silver equivalent nice and i suspect you know that would put us in 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 the category of a of a san dimas or a, or a palmarejo or or some of these very large um silver districts in mexico and you know i suspect that that um you know panuco being a, a district that's that's really never really been explored or, or systematically drilled and you know with the success that we're seeing at napoleon and tejitos um, I suspect that um, you know it may be possible that that in the future we find um, you know a significant amount of of silver that that could back something like that up. Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic! That sounds like a great thing. And uh, time wise, do we have to wait another two three years for that, or is that something you would say maybe we can achieve the next twenty four months? Uh, I, I I would suggest that it's something perhaps that we could we could achieve quicker than than perhaps people just people suspect okay super that's 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 okay for me <laughs> great <laughs> super let's talk about tajitos because i think this is also quite important for you i mean uh, napoleon josephine we know that uh, um uh, that is all Fantastic, no doubt. But what I really like with your news from 19th May that you have 32 drill holes, average over three meters through width with over 500 grams silver equivalent. This must be really economic. Well, it, it certainly looks very good. Um, and the interesting thing about Tejitos is that it's, um, you know, whereas Napoleon has some of the, the base metal credits as well, uh, Tejitos is actually just silver and gold. Um, Mm -hmm. So it, it's really an interest. It, it's slightly different than than Napoleon, but it is it, it's slightly higher grade with a you know three meters instead of four meter wide vein. And the reason that we put out these news releases that talk about uh, average width and average grade is that we want to give as much disclosure as, disclosure as possible to um, you know to our um, to the market and to our shareholders. And you know that that actually gives the ability you know, for someone to look at, okay, well, if that's the average grade, then what's the volume here? And, you know, you can kind of do some calculations based on that. Um, and, you know, what we're seeing at Tijitos is, is certainly another uh, potential area of resources here uh, for the company in the near term. Um, again, Tijitos wide open to the north and the south, uh, along strike, uh, wide open at depth, um, really fantastic grades there. And, uh, you know, Tijitos is, is, is one of the areas that we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. Super, fantastic. And that would be, let's say, a future uh, mine feed, let's call it like that. And you could process it also, this also with the same plant, the same, let's say, equipment you have. What we've seen uh, in the district is that, um, you know, various types of, of, um, of veins. So we actually see this at Sandy Mass uh, to the to the north of us, about 80 kilometers. But there's, there's two types of veins. There's the uh, uh, well, at least in Panuco, I'll talk about Panuco. There's, there's the veins that run north-south, and then there's the veins that kind of run northeast-southwest. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, well, for instance, uh, Napoleon has the kind of slightly higher base metals, uh, although it's, you know, it's almost entirely gold and silver. And then Tejitos has um, gold and silver. Um, but it, el elsewhere in the, in the area that we see processing, both of those veins get processed by the same milling facilities. Mm -hmm. Super fantastic because it saves a lot of money and brings down the cost enormously. Yeah, it, it's um, it's quite <laughs> simple from what we see. Yeah, super. Well, Michael, thank you very much. It was a great update, and it really looks like that you guys, yeah, 
hit it the nail on the on the head with this financing because now you guys are clean and clear and uh, ready to rumble i would say i would agree with that <laughs> <laughs> fantastic super so when when does that close when do you have the money available uh, it'll be a little bit later this week we expect Boah, super okay hey then good luck with everything and uh, please go full throttle because we want to see uh, much much more of that and of course we want to see the nice resource estimates and uh, pre-feasibility studies if you do that even and of course we want to see a 12 million ounce uh, silver equivalent producer here in the in the near term future well that you know that's the goal and of course you know Vishla, the, the company's name um you know is just named after a, a very energetic uh, hunting dog mm -hmm. and uh, you know if you think back it wasn't um it, it was it, it was less than i suppose it was about 10 months ago that we made the initial discovery at napoleon and, and since then you know we've, we've moved to eight drill rigs on the project um you know we've raised uh, for over the life of a company over 100 million dollars and progressed this this um you know this, this this company quite aggressively and i suspect that we'll continue to do that and so when i say you know, that, uh, that I, you know, I think we can accomplish our goals faster than anybody expects, you know, I think we'll continue to keep up, uh, you know, great momentum and, and energy. Super. Fantastic. I love to hear that. Thank you very much, Michael, all the best. And I have a good feeling that we talk very soon. Great. Thank you, Jochen. Thank, Thank you sure. very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Michael Connor, the CEO of Vishla Silver. And you heard it, $60 million bought. It'll probably the over allotment might be also close to. And then they have easily uh, $80 million in the bank. And they can really move very quickly forward to bring this fantastic project into production. Don't forget, they have an option on the mill. And they have all the processing facilities already and all those kind of things. And we only wait for resource estimate, of course, and uh, some technical things they have to do before they can start, but it really looks outstanding. So this stock price has a lot more potential I can yeah, really imagine. And I would suggest you really check out the company if you are not already a shareholder. I am a shareholder of the company and I hold my shares. That's also for sure. Probably I have to buy some more. So thank you very much for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.